Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you a setup I built to create dozens of different objects with a few clicks. But before we begin, let me explain what actually procedural modeling is and why it is so awesome. So procedural modeling or parametric or parametric modeling is a direct opposite of polygonal modeling, which we all have done at some time. Procedural modeling involves using input of values in order to manipulate points, edges and polygons rather than just dragging them by hand like we used to do. The main advantage of procedural modeling is incredible efficiency when you need to export large amounts of kind of semi-similar objects. Here's a great example how it can be used in film and of course widely used in game design. If you need to create multiple variations of some assets, mostly being hard surface object. It's super easy and fun to do that in Houdini, but I have also found these amazing examples of procedural buildings done in Blender using GeoNodes. And if you want to take a deeper look into proceduralism, this video is an awesome source of lots of info and I'll add the link uh, to the description so if you also think that procedural modeling or procedural techniques in general are pretty awesome you can check that video for extra valuable information so i wanted to create this rbd vase setup and i needed a few different bases in today's tutorial i will walk you through this beginner setup and what's great about it it does not require any polygonal input and by saying that i saw quite a few procedural ways creation techniques and actually i did a few using cinema 4d hand drawn curve and lath lathy generator and i actually have a tutorial for that but here it is all 100 procedural that being said i'm sure i did my best to explain every little bit and this is more like an intro for complete beginners because the shape is still pretty simple, but works great to explain what each node does and why it's here. Also, there will be this RBD tutorial using these vases, and it will be published later this week. But if you don't want to wait and want to hop in or just grab project files and also grab these vases for free, that all is available for my patrons today. And I want to thank David Tavan, Steven Wonder Linden, Rhino Eckstein. 10G, Anton Gebold, Lucas Trutchen, Nick Davis, Gwerin Morhagen, Louis Begro, Andrew Henrik, Artmel 3D, Cody Cho, Peter Sillins, and MG for becoming my patrons and supporting me creating these videos for you. If you also want to view Patreon exclusive tutorials, which is basically two times more tutorials and grab project files with huge discounts or even for free, plus free asset packs and most importantly join our cozy little discord channel there's a link in the description to my patreon click on it and check it out so here we are in houdini and i have my wall rbd set up here and i have these five versions of these vases so let's just go through node by node and see what we got so we start with the line length is set to 2.3 and point set to 20 but all of these parameters are actually really flexible and in the end of the tutorial I will show you how we could make it even a bit better. So we want to displace the line. So let's go and check this attribute warp. So we drop it and here we are inside of the warp. So basically what we need to do is we want to grab a position of each point and use a gradient ramp or yeah, basically just a ramp and offset the position of the points on x axis to target only x axis what we need to do is to split the position which is vector we need to use vector to float to split it into three values and then to attach it to the output we should convert it back to vector so we are using float to vector and basically here you can see that i'm transmitting the y and z axis as they come from the original geometry but for the x axis we will use some math so what we want to do is grab a pit node and it should be pit range unclumped and for our value 
we are using the point number which goes into the value then minimum should be set to zero because we don't want them to go this direction for the max we grab our total point number and subtract one and that's done because the point the number of the points starts from one so it's it goes if for example, we have like five points, it will be one, two, three, four, five. But ptnum, which is an attribute that each point stores, starts with zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, four, five uh, points. And we want to shift that range to be from zero to one. Then we can feed it in a ramp, change the ramp type to float, and feed that ramp to the x value of our float vector and feed all of that to the position. This will displace our line. And here you can use these points to actually change the shape of your ways. I, this is your base setup and now I want to smooth it out so I use attribute blur. I have unchecked pin border points so it goes like this. This step is pretty optional but I think it just, just looks a bit better. So then we want to target the bottom point and you can do that by clicking here and selecting first point of primitive oh and the node yeah of course the node is group expression now we want to delete that point and here in the delete you just set the group to group one which was created with your group expression and now we can use revolve and you can instantly see the shape of our ways you can tweak these divisions um yeah, just set it to something even because polyfill requires even even numbers here. And now we want to set up another group, which in my case is linked to the divisions of the revolve minus one. This will target only these last polygons. And now here we have our group two, so we can drop a polyfill, use that group two here in the boundary group, choose the fill mode to be quadrilateral grid, and we have the bottom of our ways. The form patch should be unchecked, corner offset should be around five, and you want a lot of smoothing here. And uncheck the point normals, because we will be using normals when we have done everything here so then i'm using lab thicken you can use poly extrude but i think you will have labs because right now it comes like by default with houdini and it's pretty cool node i mean it does um all the things that you need to configure in poly extrude this node um just does it in a few clicks so depth set to 0.01 and both directions checked dissolve middle edge i think it's it should be unchecked by default but yeah anyways now we obviously want some uvs should initialize them and now we can subdivide it subdivide it quite a few times um doesn't matter that much but yeah it's up to you now let's add normals and here uh, we deleted one of the points after our initial line was created so we want to drop a transform and click move centroid to origin so our centroid is actually at the center so that's pretty much it for the ways and now you can modify many different things like let's say the, the overall shape on the ways you can do things like this i don't know it's very up to you how you want to shape this way so yeah you can always add um some new points and yeah pretty big freedom to do some cool stuff so now i told you that there's a thing how we can make it even better so you might saw this in my previous tutorials but i think that's pretty important for convenient procedural modeling. So what I want to do here is select our params node, which is nothing, which is null. And here I can click edit parameter interface. And here, let's say I want to float, which name will be height name and label. Oh, actually name should be lowercase. Label should be like this. So accept and I can grab our line and go and select length with a right mouse button and select copy parameter, go back to our params, click with the right button on the height parameter and say paste relative references. So now what I can do here, select our transform and I can make this way taller or make it squished. Yeah, I just don't need to go to the line again. And for the points, 
actually here let's say we want to add another one which will be integer because points are integer so name should be line resolution line resolution so we go to our line copy parameter points go back to our params paste relative expressions relative references sorry and we can do that with uh, all of the different stuff here so maybe we want to control the thickness so we can go to our params again edit parameter interface oh, no edit parameter interface yeah so float here thickness now let's go to our thicken node depths copy parameter params paste relative references so now i should be able able to control thickness from this one node so yeah you can see I can do that and you can add majority of the stuff to the params node so you can control all of your settings or ways parameters from just one place all right guys so that's it for this quick little intro into procedural modeling I think I will be doing more let me know if there are any objects that you would love to see me creating procedurally and don't forget to check out my patreon again it's two times more tutorials and huge discounts and even free project files assets and much much more i'll be back very soon bye